Diluted earnings at three cents for KBH and some fifty cent consensus. Shop is that anything significant? Out of reach. Shop. The almost close margin expanded 140 basis points in your period of 19.9%. Order value of 29% for backlog of 12% for KBH. You're right there, Jules. What's up, everybody? Oh, I got to lower a uh, couple of things here. Jules wants me to hold the. Close it to close. I got the flow show over here. Get the webinar, little Jules. All right. How's everybody doing? Did I hit record? I hit record. Yes. Pitch fix earnings. Got on Google. All right, let's get rolling. What time is it? Oh, actually, we got to give it a couple minutes here. I thought it was 4.15. Just to, you got some late stragglers. I got to uh, send something over to private Twitter so we can look at, uh, let me dig it up. Hmm, where is everything? Okay, let's see. All right. Okay. What's his name? Did he come out with a note today? I'm just curious. Let's see. No, I didn't get any of them. Yeah, good. I'll talk to you later. What's up, Dan? Uh, Flow Jesus is both. Um, there are automated flow alerts and uh, some I post and obviously commentary. So a little bit 
of both. Or a lot of both, I should say. All right, 4.15, let's get uh, cracking. All right, so um, fun couple days here. And I'll try to get everybody caught up um, who's not a member. Um, and it's good anyhow, uh, if you are a member, yeah, maybe you guys get bored of this stuff. I like to even review it as much as possible for myself um, and continuously remind myself, uh, you know, how things are setting up out there. Because uh, in the heat of the action, especially with the flow, stocks are up, stocks are down. You start develop, you know, you build a bias emotionally. You could quickly forget. Um, you know, your own game plan, right? Your own playbook. So uh, I apologize for those of you who it may sound repetitive, uh, but as you, you members have been noticing, I, um, you know, in times like this, I like to send out, I'll send out a, an audio post after the close of the market. Then sometimes I'll follow it up with, um, you know, a post pre-market uh, just so, you know, you get the point uh, it may matter to you, right? It may be actual to you. It may not be. Um, so, but whatever the case may be, in times like this, it's good to uh, review the important things. All right, so to catch up everybody who comes on to this weekly uh, from Twitter and all, uh, this weekend after... We got a glimpse of all our indicators and readings of positioning, et cetera, out there over the last week. Uh, this weekend, I kind of, in simple English, came to the conclusion that the strategy that I was intending on putting to work and using during this correction phase, right? I always can't, I can't put a label on these things. I don't know what it is. A drawdown, right? This recent drawdown. Um, basically in simple English is, I came to the conclusion that I would need to put that on pause, right? And that's the key word, pause, right? So what was my outlook um, and why did it change? My, you know, coming into every drawdown, what my goal is, is to have the market come in, right? There's some weakness. I'm hoping to have a, I should have a pretty decent size cash position. I may not be in all cash, but if I follow my rules, right? I should have a decent cash position when that time comes. And, you know, I salivate at the mouth, uh, like many do when they have cash to put to work, uh, when things, you know, come down in price uh, in a decent way, all right? So my plan coming into uh, this recent pull was I was hoping that sooner than later, right, it wouldn't be something that lasts too, too long. Um, and considering the magnitude of how quick the drawdown was in the first couple of days, uh, that I would already start I'll already be able to nibble on some positions out there, put some money to work. And if there was more selling, I could, you know, look to add or look to add different names, whatever the case may be. You know, that's what I like to do. When we get a put, when we get a, a correction or a drawdown, and when I have sentiment get in my corner, okay, it's almost like I feel like I have a floor underneath me. Yeah, there could be additional selling, but in all likelihood, the selling should be closer to the end than the beginning. And I want to take advantage of that time by buying, you know, names I like or the indices with some time behind them, right? Just in case I'm early. So that was the goal. And that's what I was hoping we were getting closer to over the past couple of weeks with this drawdown, right? So, I mean, just logically, uh, when, you know, up here is where, right? Pink Panther, Red Arrows. So that's where there are signs usually to start 
taking down your risk as far as positions are concerned, right? A lot of us did it even earlier at the start of earnings season because of earnings and the risk that that brought, okay? So you raise cash and then a drawdown like we had here, a lot of times, you know, just off the price action, um, it usually does a pretty good job on sentiment, right? A lot of times price is the best thing to cool off sentiment. There's nothing better than it, okay? But there are rare occasions. There are rare occasions. And these rare occasions usually stem up when you get these strong rallies where every dip gets bought um, and you feel like the right move is to buy the dip, right? So you get these rare occasions where sentiment doesn't improve, okay? It actually gets a little worse, or I shouldn't even say worse, but doesn't improve, okay? Because players, you're not the only one that's interested in buying the dip. There are a lot of others, including retail money, hedge fund money, that had the same playbook and same intentions that you do, right? So they retail hedge funds and that whole camp, the non-believer camp we refer to them as, they miss the majority of this rally. And they've been hoping and praying that a pullback would be here sooner than later so they can get some real money involved, okay? They got that pullback. And what they do? they got some money involved. Okay, and what's interesting, you know, this market has a million different things going on, right? And we talk about that a lot. You can't just put everything under the same roof because what was interesting about this buy the dip from hedge funds um, and others out there was that they sold Okay, they came out of some of the stuff that they were hiding in, some of the fang names and tech names, right? Thinking there was a bubble developing. They sold those in off this poll, okay? And they rotated into economically sensitive names and cyclical names. Okay, so it had an interesting little wrinkle to it. Not only did they buy the dip in the actual market, um, but completely different than, than what they were doing, they started to focus on some of the economically uh, sensitive names. Okay? So the reason now that I have to put that particular playbook that I came into the week on pause is because now my concern is, is that you, you have more players in the pool, right? We've been using that analogy, okay? So here the pool was getting pretty crowded, all right? And more so on a short-term basis. So they washed out some of that short-term heat. But as far as positioning is concerned, you had even more people now taking advantage of this dip and look and getting in the pool, right? So getting long equity, all right? So the risk becomes that if there's any trigger, any catalyst for some selling, what happens, okay? You can't just go and buy that dip anymore because there is some decent supply that could hit the market and run you over. You follow, right? And again, we, we talked about this Sunday, so it may sound repetitive to some of you, um, but you know, that's, that's what you know, the, the little pickle was um, when we saw our, a lot of our indicators update towards the end of the week, uh, is that you know, nothing improved on the sentiment side, even though we had a decent pull from the highs. Okay, so when I see that, what I generally like to do is I put my position in swing trading on hold, okay? So as eager as I am to go and buy some of the names we've seen action in, I mean, some good looking names, 
some names I liked, you know, even before the correction, hoping, hoping to get some sort of entry on, right? And we're seeing some solid betting out there on the call side, okay? What concerns me is that that betting could be from that hedge fund crowd, and I just went over the risk. Okay, and it doesn't matter. See, that's what people don't realize um, when they start to follow options flow or a lot of people on, on social media. They think because somebody places a bet that ultimately they have to be right because they put some big money behind a bet. It's a bet. And, you know, I've been stressing to you guys for ages now, if you've been around that long, right, since I've been doing this, that when everybody is on one side of you know one side of the on, on one side of the bet uh, in all likelihood they're going to lose their money no matter who they are how smart they are you know we've just seen it in this rally you had every top notch hedge fund manager you have the smartest guys in on the street who refuse to believe in this rally but they were all on the same page, all of them, right? And again, you know, we're no smarter than Paul Tudor Jones or Tepper or any of those cats, right? <laughs> you, you can't even compare any of us to them as far as market savviness. But, you know, when anybody's on the side of the crowd, the odds are against you. Okay, so that's what we see here now. Okay, I have that fear, that worry that everybody thinks that this pullback is healthy, right? You hear that continuously. I've never heard the word healthy explaining and describing a pullback so much in my life. I'm not gonna lie to you, never. You know, usually everybody wants a pullback and then when the pullback comes, they shit their pants. They don't want to buy anything because, you know, it's easy to say you want to pull back when stocks are going up every day, but when stocks are coming down and they're selling violently and you have negative news and noise around you on CNBC and everywhere else, it's not easy to pull the trigger and start buying things. I don't care who you are, right? So when the pullback actually comes, nobody wants to buy it because of that fear, okay? This pullback, you're hearing from that same crowd who usually is nervous when selling starts up, you're hearing healthy. This is exactly what you see, it's a health, and it has been, and it is a healthy pullback. But what people don't realize is, even though it's quote unquote a healthy pullback, that doesn't, that doesn't mean you can't get lumped up if you start buying too early. You know, these corrections can really get, you know, can really get dicey, especially when you have supply out there that can hit the market, meaning people, players are more long than you would like. That's where those margin calls come in. That's where that acceleration to the downside where it runs through debt, you know, intraday niners like they're not even, like they don't even exist, right? Those type of days, that's because there are players that need to sell. No niner is stopping that. So, that, you know, that's what you worry about here. You know, that's what I'm worried about here. All right. So that was, you know, we came out of the weekend review and that was the concern. Okay, nothing, no major concern, just whatever plan we were ready to put in place or we felt we were getting closer to put in place as far as swing positions with time, that would have to go on pause until we see some improvement out of those same areas, those same signals that we look at every week. Okay, could happen quick, could even get worse. All right, but that's what we mean by on pause. Okay, so that was the bad news. Okay, the good news 
coming into this week was even though over an intermediate term basis, we had to put things on pause in regards to swing positions. The crowd overdid it on buying the dip and rotating out of tech and into cyclicals and economically sensitive names. They overdid it. They thought, you know, they felt and acted like tech would never have an up day ever again. And it was interesting to see out of all the, you know, the, the tactical sentiment we looked at out there, right? So on a short-term basis, we saw short-term sentiment flash bullish signals, right? Over a short-term basis. So that tells us, look for that snapback squeeze, okay? And when you dig a little deeper and find, you know, what, is washed out the most sentiment wise when we look at the sectors and everything else it happened to be tech which was the hardest going in all right so that gave us a heads up to not only look for a squeeze coming into this week okay but potentially leadership out of tech right so now we only needed the flow and the sweepers to confirm what they were actually buying if we had any interest in playing names or you could just play the nasdaq or the tqqq or whatever the case may be and you couldn't draw it up or script it any better than how the sweeper activity looked you know yesterday they every it almost felt like they were ignoring everything else but tech and the beauty of it was, it wasn't just big tech, you know, actually big tech didn't even catch a lot of action. You know, some of the more crowded names out there like the Fang names and stuff like that. It was more of the hot growth software, the tech names a lot of us like to play. Like, I don't know about you guys, I don't like playing the, the Fang names, you know? The, the the new growth leaders, some of the, the software names, even some of the stay-at-home tech names, those things are bullets. Especially when you're looking to stay tactical, right? Meaning short-term, look at the whole, maybe hold an extra day, uh, that sort of thing. All right, so we, we saw our action, you know, starting up like yesterday in, in faster, right? And you know what the beauty of it was? We spoke about this in the room yesterday that we had so much sweeper activity, you know, signaling that they were positioning for a squeeze in tech. We had so much of it in tech that honestly, you didn't have to wait for a sweep in a name you were on. If you really felt good about it, right? So in other words, what I meant by that was, if Fastly and, you know, all these other software names are catching action, and, it, and you're waiting on yesterday, you know, a Twilio or something like that to catch action, okay? And it's rare, Twilio won't catch sweeps every day. You know, if you like it that much, that was what I meant by that comment yesterday, just buy it, okay? Because it's obvious they're making a play on the whole entire group, you know, on the whole entire group, all right? So... Again, you could have took the easy route. You could have played NQ. You could have played TQQQ or QQQ if you wanted to be even more conservative. Or you could have taken that added risk, that extra risk, and look at some of the names uh, to trade, right? You could have day traded them yesterday and today. You could have bought them yesterday, held them into today, whatever the case may be. Each and every one of us are different, okay? So now what? So now what? Now we look to see, you know, how this plays from here, okay? We don't want to come in and buy names that have been up three straight days, right? So personally, what I want to see is I want to see some of the flow we've been seeing spilling into possibly some laggards that maybe didn't participate as much in these past two days, the bounce back. Okay, some under the hood type names. And what looks promising is uh, the type of action we've been seeing, right? The type of flow we've been seeing has been 
in a lot of under the hood type stuff. So, you know, for new entries, okay, we want to look, we want to look there. All right. But the key to all of this, the trick is, okay, these are short term and tactical trades. Okay, because I already explained to you, the swing with time has been put on pause. Okay, and why has it been put on pause? When it, like even, you know, even if we feel like, for example, if you're gonna go out into next year and buy some calls, you know, what's the big deal if this market goes a little lower, chopped and run? I mean, that's your call if you wanna make that. For me, I don't mind being a little early, but I, I don't wanna be really early. Like if if I can have my way, I don't want to be early at all, you know, and that's why I use a lot of the, the sentiment signals and, and the sweeper activity to confirm that, to help me out with that. Okay. Otherwise I would never know where to start buying a pullback. All right. And you never know, you know, you never know, like things change so drastically. Like we've seen them rotate into cyclicals, back into software, back into thing, into gold, into the miners, into biotech. We have no idea, no idea. Even though we may think on a day-to-day -day basis is a different group, we have no idea who and what sectors are gonna lead us out of this. And anybody who tells you that's full of shit, there's no way, there are no signs of that yet. Today, it looks like tech in the stay at home news, right? The past couple of days, you had everybody talking about how there was just a correction in tech and everything else was bulletproof. Everything else wasn't even in a correction. You know what I mean? It changes on a day-to-day -day basis. I shouldn't say day-to-day -day basis, but maybe every couple of days. So that's the other benefit to, you know, if the signals are telling you hang out a little bit, you wanna hang out as long as possible. So when you start building a position and names, you know, you can have some confidence that, you know, you're gonna cash your ticket there. All right, so that's the rationale behind it, okay? And personally, what I think um, we may see here, and again, it's too early for me to even make a comment like that, but I'm just, I'm talking about what I'm seeing out of some of the sweeper activity and the price action out there. I think it's going to become more of a stock pickers type market here. All right. So you're going to have like, you're going to have days where maybe Fang sell hard, you know, or chop around. Um, and you'll have you know, names where the software stocks, rip it, you know, huge day for the software names. But what's gonna happen is when there's a need for some liquidation out there like we saw yesterday, they're gonna hit everything. Okay, they're gonna hit everything. Doesn't mean every stock is gonna look the same and they have it, right? Like look at this data door. Okay, so you see here, right? This doesn't look bad at all. This went into a correction early, has been chopping around. It's had some really bad sell days where this thing looked like it was probably going back to where it started. But net, net, it's healthy consolidation. All right, but the problem is, is if this overall market is still in this correction type phase, there's a strong possibility some names like this may stay in it. And if you're buying the highs, you know what I mean? Instead of buying the lower range and selling there for that tactical trade, you can lose money. You know, you can lose money. Unless you say to yourself, you're willing to hold through all of this. And I don't know any one of you that I know, right? Because we're, you're all degenerate. That are you going to hold through all this? There's no way. 
There's no way. You guys are going to buy it one day. As soon as this thing pulls back two days, you're going to sell it, take the loss, and then you're going to talk to yourself. You know, so instead, if you have a tactical approach, what you want to do is utilize the days where you have some favorable sentiment on your side, right? You have a better spot. Maybe you have some flow in the name for those of you who are relying on flow like I am. You know, pick a spot there and then trade it, okay? And then trade it. Me personally, I like to day trade these days. You know, I like to day trade all of them because there, it's less risk. You know, I'm, I like to play the equity and, you know, I feel like I don't need to take that extra risk if they're going to give it to me on the, uh, on this, on the day trading, on the, on the, on the equity side, you know, and they're not big. I'm not, it's not like buying calls and doubling your money, but I'm, I'm not looking for that anyway. You know, I'm not looking for that anyway. I'm looking for that reward on the stuff I swing, you know, the stuff. I like to build a decent sized position in with some time. And that's where I look for uh, a bigger reward. But you know, a lot of these names, I mean, fastly yesterday and today could have been day traded. Could have been day traded. It still looks great. You know, maybe there's another big two days out of it. I'm totally content with what the stock is. All right? This bill, I mean, I love this. Thing. I love this thing. I like the spot and everything, but I took it off the table today. You know what I mean? Like that's, you know, that's me. You know, that's just me. Because there's, for me, there's less risk. Why do I feel like there's less risk? Because coming into the week, like we discussed, we were looking for a tech squeeze. We got the flow to confirm a tech squeeze. We got the price action to confirm a tech squeeze, right? So it's no coincidence that all of a sudden all these names looked healthy off sweeper activity. You know, they, they all move nicely off sweeper activity. It's because we had that sentiment backdrop behind us, the wind at our back. You know, unfortunately, it doesn't last forever, but we had that on our back. You know, so that's where we want to look. I mean, God forbid you played a name like a, a Zoom or any of those names. And, you know, you had just as good as a hit there that in any bull market, if you would have swung the thing for a couple of days. You know? So that's, that. no matter how you play it, you just, you, you know, you got to understand the strategy. That's what it is. You're looking to take less risk to make less money, sometimes you'll be a little more fortunate, all right, because of the added risk we spoke about at the start of this webinar. You're not looking to be aggressive here, all right? We're looking to be aggressive when we have the things, all the stuff we look at behind us and a favorable bullish backdrop. That's where we want to be aggressive. Right now, with the risk of potential selling and, you know, some heavy downside, whatever day it may be, you never know when it's going to come, right? It starts in the overnight session, you wake up and futures are getting smashed. So, you know, that's what we want to try to um, try to avoid. That's what we want to try to avoid. All right, so I would look at names um, that really didn't, you got AMD, Harley Budge, you could look at that tomorrow. Keep an eye on on the sweeper activity there. You know, look at names that really didn't participate yet, and you know, play it again. I I would approach it on an intraday, if not maybe go that extra day and just sell it tightly. That's about the extent of it. You know, so you're looking at AMD to just pop out of it. Anybody have any uh, questions? Yeah, and, and you get, listen, you got, I mean, I know it sounds ridiculous me saying this, but the bets, 
you know, you want to create a watch list, right? A target list, and you want to remember these bets to see what other action comes in. But when you got that tactical hat on, when you're in this frame of mind that I'm telling you I'm in, you're not, you don't concern yourself about the bets. Because I'm, when I'm telling you, the bets mean nothing. Okay? The, there's a risk the bets mean nothing. Why? Because it could be hedge funds who are placing these bets. With all due likelihood, it is hedge funds who are placing these bets. Okay? And you know where, well, most of you know where that hedge fund indicator is, right? Be one thing if we were under the green line. You'd ride hedge fund sweeps all day long. But up near the red line, you don't want to rely on hedge fund sweeps. Or they become less risky. I mean, a lot, a lot more risky, I should say. Uh, you played shop. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, listen. Names, sometimes you're going to get lucky. Sometimes you're, the luck is going to be against, you, you know. You take added risk with, with individual names. But sometimes it pays off, you know. If it frustrates you, your best bet is to just play the indices when you're playing off sentiment for a squeeze, you know. And a lot of times, I agree. I just, I think the flow helped me out a lot this go around. You know, the flow helped me out a lot because they were hitting names I wanted them, I wanted to show me they were interested in. So, you know, unfortunately, shop doesn't um, catch enough flow, but shop had a big squeeze, didn't it? Oh, you're saying you were too far out of the money. Yeah, that's a whole other issue with options. Yeah, that's a whole other issue with options. But sure, this, you know, this is exactly, like if you were buying shop coming into the week, this is exactly what you wanted to see. You know, you think you could get a little more out of it. You want to roll or take the shot of holding an extra day and give up a little bit of green. You know, that's your call. But this is, this is what you want to see. You know, so basically down here, and you, you were looking for that snapback. You're looking for that snapback. You know? And here's the beauty of it, okay? You know, let's say we, we come in tomorrow and, um, you know, the futures are down and the next day they're flat or they sell again. We get bullish sentiment signals, again, over a short-term basis again, and we look for the same thing. We look for the same thing. And that will keep us involved, it'll keep us entertained, and possibly grind it out, make some money while we're waiting for that bigger and better setup. You know, right now it's not the bigger and better setup. There's there's risk out there. You know, one, you're in the worst part of the year you could possibly be. We all know that already, right? September's a disaster, disaster, okay? Just for volatility, it's a disaster. Um, you, know, you got a lot of balls in the air right now. You got a lot of crowded areas out there. I mean, you know, I posted this from um, JP Morgan. Where is it? You know, as bullish as you want to be on a tech stock pulling back, you know, this is FANG, and this is hedge fund positioning in FANG. Yeah. There's a lot of parked money in these things. A lot of parked money in these FANG stocks. You know, so that's why you make your money. You probably want to go elsewhere until things clean up a little bit, right? Until things clean up a little bit. Uh, on that note, that's a good segue to here are the Goldman indicators we look at every week. And then, um, oh, here, let's start with this. So here's where uh, hedge funds are right now. Here are where hedge funds are right now. And we might see a spike based on what a couple of the Goldman 
Morgan Stanley notes I wrote. We might see a little pop here coming, similar to this, based off their buying this bit. You know, so we we want to see them get washed out. We want to see them get washed out. Okay, because what's going to happen? This market rallies and this thing is going to go up here. And then what are you going to do? Are you going to just go out there and start buying stuff left and right because the market started to rally? You know, is that what you're going to do? With everybody all in the pool? God forbid you get caught. You're finished. You're finished. We, you know, we got, we got a, a, a healthy quote unquote correction. We want to see this bastard come down back into the green. That's what we want to see. Flush these bastards out. You know what I mean? Flush them out. Another thing is like the option spec money out there. Right? We should, we had some improvement there. All of a sudden the market bottoms and one, one reversal and all that spec money is back where it started again. You know, these guys got to get lumped up. They got to get lumped up. You know, you, you got a legit pullback here. These guys, they got to get lumped up. You can't, you can't buy, you can't, these people can't be fearless and buy pullbacks and make money like that. It doesn't happen. You know what I mean? It doesn't happen. All right, so that's, that's what we want to see. Here's, um, you know, hedge funds and futures from uh, Hedgetopia on Twitter. You got, look, Short, 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 dip, market dips, let's go long. No, they're right. Are they gonna be right this time? They're gonna make some money this time? They, that's fine, they can do it without me. You know, they can do it without me. Yeah, and that's, that's the key, Ryan. Like, I'm not even talking, there doesn't have to be a debacle. I'm not talking about a crash. You know, I, it's more about time, right, Ryan? Remember we were talking about that? I think it's more something about time than the size of the drawdown. I, it, this thing's just got to last longer than what we're seeing right now, okay? If this drawdown here, if, that, if this washed out a nice chunk instead of what we look at, a nice chunk of the hedge funds and the specs, then we're ready. We want to start buying here. Any weakness, we want to start buying. Why? Because they got washed out. The likelihood is sellers have dried up. More uh, higher odds of buyers coming in. And there's that floor there. So anytime there's volatility and they sell it, we want to be there and buy something. We can't do that now because they already started buying. If this thing sells and they start selling because they can, you got the potential for at the least, like Ryan saying, a lot of volatility. You know, at the least. Kind of like we've been seeing, right? This felt pretty scary and ugly. And you know, you get these snapback reversals. So it should continue. But, you know, the most important thing is that, you know, we don't want to get, like, I, for me, and this is, I guess, from experience, like, for me, if this thing is just going to rip to new highs and everyone gets all in and the market party's on, you know, it, it's not going to bother me because I don't want to be a part of that, you know? I know that ends badly. Maybe it can go on for a little bit, but I know it's going to end up like Bitcoin, right? That's, that's how those things end. So I don't want to be a part of it. Where I like to make my money is waiting for these things to play out the right way and then being there when everybody feels like we're, we're going lower and positioned that way. You know, because like I said, I have confidence with, with that floor underneath. You know, with that floor underneath. I, I, I can't have that confidence here. So I could pretend and just start buying, but I don't have that confidence here. I can't lie to myself and, and say I do. 
All right, so that's hedge fund. Uh, let me show you the Goldman indicators haven't changed much. They haven't changed much. And I think that speaks for itself, right? Like they should have changed. So the dark blue is current, right? So I guess a little bit, right? We were, we were pretty hot here, short term across the board. And these things are still here. Not much change though, from where we were coming in. Not much change. You know, we want to see some of these shorter to intermediate term momentum and spec guys get washed out nicely. And then if, you know, if we get all this here, that's where you get that sweet spot bottom. That's where you get that sweet spot bottom, right? Most of the lows, that's where they all are. They all end up here. Most of them. Uh, this is the momentum and risk appetite. Yeah, no, no change. Momentum cooled off a little bit. And we want to see this start to creep, creep lower. Yeah, again, there's not, and you see it, guys. There's, there's not much fear out there. You, you hear the word healthy correction and nausea. You know, you hear it constantly. Oh, uh, what do I make? Oh, well, okay, good question. So Sharpies are still long, right? And they've actually added to their long exposure. Um, but specs have covered their short. So like I mentioned on the Sunday webinar for members, the, the signal, the strong signal is out of the main indicator that takes the riffraff and the sharpies and combine into into an indicator. When both both parties are at extremes, that's where that signals like magic. Okay, you know, sharpies alone, I can't say the same thing for. You know, like I've seen sharpies long, and there was some market weakness, and then they started slapping on hedges into the weakness. You know, that was telling in itself, but I've seen that before. You know, as far as a timing signal, it's not as official. I think it's a good sign net net as a whole that they're still long, right, for this bull market to live on. I think it's a good sign because they got a lot of patience. You know what I mean? Um, you know, we've seen them net long copper forever. Remember? Forever. While well, copper did nothing. And then copper, yeah, they Sharpies could be really early. A lot of the smart money, you know, too early for us. That's the problem. They're a different animal, you know? But I'll tell you this much. If the Sharpie riffraff indicator, that main indicator, pops into bullish territory, we get a bullish signal, that, you know, that changes a lot. That's a legitimate bullish signal where we need to start looking at long position. You know? Right now, and that's another thing we didn't talk about. The riffraff covered a, a chunk of their short. Um, it depends. It depends. You know, the what the, the the hedges like to do is they like to usually hedge into strength, but there have been that rare occasion where they've stayed long for a decent amount of time, and then like I give you an example, two thousand seven into two thousand eight. Okay, they were long at the end of that two thousand seven rally, but they've been long like now. You know. It's not that Sharpies um, had just got long. They've had a massive long position from the lows, from the lows. You know what I mean? 
But in 2007, 2008, what happened was they were long and the market pulled back a bit. Nothing crazy, just a regular pullback, kind of like we're seeing now. And they started to put on hedges into the pullback. So they started to take off their long position into the pullback. And they continued to do that every single week until they were fully hedged for a lot of 2008. So you, you don't want to predict it. You know, you don't want to try to predict it. Because look at this week. You know, look what happened this week. I would have never predicted it. You know, that riffraff covering their shorts into weakness. You know, they've been short out the eyeballs for this whole entire rally. And they covered into weakness. So, you know, that's another thing. Like, riffraff is thinking this is a healthy pullback as well. Right? Otherwise, they would hold their short position. So that, that's got me a little bit concerned. You know, it's got me a little bit concerned. Again, again, concerned, not to the point where I'm out shorting everything, not to the point where even some of the leftover long positions I got that I've been selling them, you know, I'm still holding them for now, but concerned enough to stop in my tracks looking to put on any additional risk on position on the position side you know until we see improvement we can see improvement you know if this if we would have had a, a, a pull last year we could have seen some improvement this week you know it doesn't take much a lot of times as soon as they get run over a lot of times you see improvement uh short hedges the COT data. Sharpies are the sharp hedgers, the commercial traders out of the COT data. Hedge funds, you know what hedge funds are. You don't know what hedge funds are? I don't have the energy right now to explain that. We could do that at a later date. They manage money, client money. Um, you know what I mean? So again, it's not the end of the world. We can still play. We can still look to make money. We got to be a little more selective. We got to be disciplined. Uh, and we got to be patient, you know, and let this thing play out. And, you know, I, ideally what would we want to play out? We want this thing to play out. Let it get through the month of September, right? Who the hell wants to be involved in that anyway? carve out a bottom, improve some of those indicators, and then we're ready to go into a rally into the end of the year, if that's what they got lined up. All right. But for now, anyhow, I still think you can put your stock pickers hat back on. All right. The NASDAQ, I mean, the NASDAQ could have more upside here. Uh, and now it's getting, you know, if you're in it already, if you're looking for a new long, you're, it's not enough juice there, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Especially that you had that red to green yesterday. That was the beauty of yesterday. You know, so you could see this thing float up here, but it may be stuck in here. So if we are stuck, that's what I'm saying, individual names, while this thing maybe tops out and hangs around, individual names, some names may play catch up. A lot of times that happens. You know, a lot of times that happens. All right, so you know, you know the names to look at anyhow. Like AMD is one of those textbook names uh, to look at. You know, see, it hasn't really, it hasn't done anything. It hasn't done anything. So it could pop out of here. And then you have everybody talking new highs again. And then maybe uh, that's it. Software, the stay at home names look, look great again. But I feel like we say that every couple of weeks and then they run out of gas, right? Right, hasn't that been the case? Like these things have been in this phase for a while, which is a good thing because the, they've had ridiculous moves. But the only one really that broke out in a sense is Zoom. 
know, everything else, like we mentioned, D Dog, Choppy, you know, healthy style consolidation. Fastly, same thing. Looks like it's ready to go. Then they yank it right back down to the bottom of the range. Yeah, Twitter had a big day today. Twitter had a big day. But that too, you know, that too. But again, you know, this is this is what you, what you want to look at from here. Stuff that looked like this. You know what I mean? And didn't do this yet. And, you know, and I'm saying for day trades, because that's where you have little risk. You know, you see some sweeper activity starting to heat up. You get in and you're looking for the move right there and then. You know, you don't get the move, pull the plug and move on. Yeah, Snap has a lot of action here too. Snap, pins. There's individual pockets, you know, but it's random. It's random. And then, you know, it's stock. That's what I mean by stock picking. You know, you can't just assume everything is going to move together. You know, like, and last week, what did we have? We had like DraftKings bust out, right? Out of nowhere. Well, not out of nowhere, but the market didn't help. You know, so you had that bust out. So that's what I would look to individual names, especially if you can play under the radar names. Look at look towards that camp. But you know, there's there there's a lot of good looking stuff out there. There's a lot of good looking stuff. A lot of good looking stuff. Uh yeah, blink this there's, there's some weird names too out there catching action. I just don't like the chasing type of names. But again, you know, if you can catch them here and then sell that rip, you know, that's what you want to do. Randomly, like you had the battery names, I had a Tesla, right? Same thing. Dead, you know, quiet here, then started catching action on this day. And that was quite the move. Quite the move. GameStop has just been insane. GameStop has just been insane. Now it's a little late. Now it's a little late. What time is it? Five? But I got to run out of here a little earlier today, guys. All right. Otherwise, I can talk names with you all day long. You guys know that. All right. Anybody who's new, WallStreetJesus.com, if you're looking for more information. Uh, but that's it. If you can, be patient. I right, take what the market gives you, and those of you who are members, you you know utilize sentiment and sweeper activity. That's what it's there for. You know, it can help out a lot in these times. It can help out a lot with entries and exits and stuff like that. All right, have a good night, everybody. Good luck the rest of the week. I'll see most of you tomorrow.